just take that piece and make it into what I throw up on Facebook. All right. Are we live? All right. Yeah, I gotta get I gotta get used to this new interface. But I'm gonna do it, Chuck. I'm gonna get used to it. <laughs> That's right, baby. How's it going, Blazing Ice? <sighs> I really gotta also fix this this blazing sunlight that I have spilling down on top of me. Uh, I know ex <laughs> exactly. I've been trying to figure out how to arrange my office so that it's a little bit more conducive to, but there's no really good way to do it or I lose my windows. Yeah, I, we probably need to set up a little studio in the print shop. <laughs> they thought I froze up, but I was just I was just not moving. <laughs> I was sitting still, didn't want to get seen. What is that old Monty Python skit? Uh, how not to be seen? <laughs> Stand behind the bushes and people shoot uh, bazookas at him. How's, <laughs> how's it going, OJ and DM Commander? How's it going? DM knows what I'm talking about. You know what it is? The how not to be seen and they go, they stand behind the bushes or they stand behind like a washing machine or something and someone starts blowing them up with grenade launchers or what have you. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've watched The Flying Circus. Oh, it's good stuff though. All right, well, we are here. Uh, how's it going, Vic, Willie, and Johnny? Yes, it was the middle bush, yeah. <laughs> so Johnny knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love that skit. I think my favorite all-time Monty Python skit, at least from the Flying Circus, is uh, it's uh, Graham Chapman and um, damn it, I can't remember the other guy's name. I like him so much, but uh, they're they're hunting mosquito, they're, they're hunting animals, and they end up the, the the end of the skit is they're hunting the mosquito and Eric Idle, I think it is, and Eric Idle says there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded mosquito, and they shoot it with like a machine gun or, or some shit and, and and launch a bazooka, and it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious skit. Transformer Blue well hey OJ you must be in my neck of the neighborhood so we lose power every 15 minutes went and got myself a generator the other day it's gotten so ridiculous around here but at any rate it is November 3rd something about November 3rd I can't remember something special is happening today I can't remember what it is uh, oh yeah our Kickstarter's running that's, what, <laughs> that's, that's what's special about today but uh, we're, we're here for Ask Me Anything. And this thing, there are 137 people. They cannot be seen. <laughs> Did you ever watch The Flying Circus, Chuck? Did you ever watch that? Love The Flying Circus. I vote yes to the Kickstarter. Yeah, it's doing well. We're very happy with it. And I'm, I got to tell you, I'm sure you've seen the, the tribute cover that... Jason Walton did, but uh, well, he obviously did the player's handbook, but the one that he's working on for the Castle Keeper's Guide is going to be absolutely out of this world. I mean, look at that thing. I'm so stoked over that thing. Uh, you, I can't ever tell. You know, I don't give Jason a whole lot of direction. I just say, hey, this is what I want, and then he goes, and I, 19 out of 20 times, it is it is a, a hit that I'm just over this world with. I got all my aired stuff in the middle today, so yes, a significant hand indeed. Indeed, Johnny, yes. <laughs> Log into Discord. I will do it. Is it supposed to push a bot or something? All right. Discord is almost up. Getting there. Getting there. It's telling me something. All right. I'm in. Well, there you go. <laughs> something like that. Well, we're, we're at... Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, Jason Walton, he has to get real aggressive with it. Not Walton, Jason Bay. I forget to send out comp copies, all kinds of stuff. 
we're horrible here. <sighs> yeah, me either, DM. It's going to be cool. I'm, I'm just stoked about it. I'm stoked about the whole thing. Um, that Kickstarter kind of muscled its way into our schedule. Uh, it wasn't really supposed to happen until next year, um, but uh, clearly we had to do it for the player's handbook's sake, and it just seemed a natural time to do the adventure's spell book and throw in the player's archive while we're at it to just get enough resources so everybody can play a little bit easier. Um, so it's it's turned out it's turned out very very well. It's caused a ripple effect through our schedule, but uh, eh, what are you gonna do? It's what trolls have. It happens to trolls all the time. So as Chuck is learning because. Uh, I texted him, well, I texted all of you guys, I guess what, one o'clock Saturday afternoon, <laughs> ranting about something. <laughs> <laughs> I sat down for a minute, looked at something, said, wait a minute, <laughs> what are we doing here? The, the thing is that I think that it's hard for people to, to see from the outside is how many... Um, things that we we do here just to get the product out to all the different types of players from pdfs to fantasy grounds to roll 20 to print um you know whatever it is and then and then the vehicles when i started this business the vehicles were really freaking simple it was distribution <laughs> that was pretty much it uh but now it's from the kindle the nook used to be a thing you know and we got what is it drive through rpg then fantasy grounds of course our own stores uh, then retail shops, and of course distribution, and then there's Amazon, and it's just it's just just a it's a lot. So so we focus on one end and forget another end. And Saturday I was going through uh, trying to just bring myself up to speed after three months buried in that lost city of Gaxmore to to catch me up on what everybody had been working on. So uh, I came out to, I came out of hooting and a hollering. But it's good. We've already got some of that already fixed, already moving forward where we want to be, which is always a good thing. Get Tim back on deck. He's on a little bit of vacation, meandering around the eastern seaboard. I'll get him back on deck, and we'll get uh, even moment, more momentum coming. But we are here for Ask Me Anything, so if anyone has any questions, uh, please throw them up in the stream. I'll do my best to answer them, whether it's RPG-related, Troll Lord-related, Castles Crusades, Kickstarter, uh, whatever crazy craziness we do around here, uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, to dive in. Uh, I've been enjoying watching Davis and Chuck explore new software uh, as they put these video things together, and we're throwing up all over the net. So that's kind of cool. I guess we're not throwing up all over the net. We're throwing them up all over the net. <laughs> but what can you do? How's it going, Rhino? Someone suggested a flip book with the PHB and a spell spell compendium as a stretch goal. Any thoughts on that? Oh, wow, that's interesting. I had... Okay, yeah, I do. I, you know, I hit it about once a week, and then I, and then I forget about it. Then the next week, I'm like, wait, Discord! <laughs> he did. He put it in the comment section. I forgot that was a Brett. That is a very good idea. That is a great stretch reward. Uh, we can do that in house. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the flip books, but man, do people love those things! <laughs> so. I know. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> well, that, that, <laughs> that's true, and it's a lot of hardback books at this point. If you if you're carrying all of your CNC stuff, it's it's a lot of weight, especially the color books. Um, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Well, you know, we did the Adventures Backpack Backpack, but that one's really... Oh, did you not see that thing? No, it looks like I got one handy. There's about three of those left. So the only problem with it, let's see if I can find the camera. So here's the backpack, right? Did I get down that camera? 
I got it. It's still shrink wrap. So here's the backpack, and it's got the logo right there, if you can see it. Yeah, Castles and Crusades. Uh, but uh, the thing about that backpack, as cool as it is, and it's sturdy as all hell because I've taken mine all over the place. Uh, but it doesn't have like pockets that you can put things in, store things in well. Uh, so it's not really conducive. But DM, I'll, I'll re, re I'll readdress that. Let me let me make a note of that uh, now um, as we're as we're cruising into the end of this in this Kickstarter. What is it, Flipbook? Because that is something we do in house. Uh, Mark can come. Mark can come back on deck and do that since he invented the things in our print shop. <laughs> on Halloween night, I watched Legend. Tom Cruise. Don't judge me, but I realize I, Vic. That is one of my all-time favorite fantasy movies, without a doubt. Uh, I I listen to that Legend soundtrack all the time when I'm writing. Uh, I enjoy it just in general, and the movie to this day is still one of my favorite fantasy movies. I absolutely love. There's very little I dislike about that movie. I can't think of anything offhand. Uh, Gristle Bones. Gristle Bones is a fantastic encounter with the witch. Uh, Darkness is just awesome. The goblins are really, really cool. The Fae are done well. I just, everything about that movie is just fantastic. It's one of those things. And if you, if you watch the movie and dive into Air a little bit, you'll see a heavy influence. I mean, I, when I was writing, creating the world of Air, Legend came out. So it was definitely, uh, uh definitely there. <clears throat> I like them because white pages that I can write on it in <laughs> And they're much lighter. Yeah, I definitely look into that. I like the idea of it. Uh, I know we can do the size. We can do up to 400 pages, I think, on our binder, so that shouldn't be an issue. I suspect that the Adventure Spellbook is going to be about 100, 150, 100 to 190 pages, somewhere in that that area. But um, and definitely, uh, definitely something to look at. And I'm glad you mentioned it because I'd forgotten about it, and I want to get that into the Kickstarter. Yeah, we really like those those backpacks. We had them all made for the Adventurers Backpack Kickstarter a couple years back. I think there's three left or something like that. I don't even know if they're for sale on the, the site anymore. But uh, probably could bring them back. I don't know. We'll do a poll. Yeah, so we did. There was, I can't remember, there's like a mug. You know what? I got stuff all over the place. Yeah, so ironically that we're talking about flip books. Um, so the Adventures backpack came with quite a few things in it. It came with this little doohickey and this water bottle. Uh, kind of a nice little boomaflachi there. Then, of course, it came with the Adventures backpack playing card, something I'm super, always super excited about. Then the dice bag that's got the logo on it. And then, ironically enough, the player's handbook adventures backpack flip book so, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah so your your backpack came with a bunch of swag in it it was really cool uh it was a good kickstarter thank you for the subscription blood wild much appreciated so i have one small issue with the kickstarter if you back just the phb for 35 dollars is it is five dollars off msrp if you back the phb and the Adventure Spellbook for 60 bucks, you still get the $5, but then you back all three for 85 and you end up losing the $5, and you pay full MSRP. Man, Grape, grape I have to do that addition <laughs> in my head side. That's too complicated for me, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had to do final approval on all that stuff, but keep in mind, those, those include the digital as well. Uh, so the digital usually knock you over the top, and the $85 level usually will get you more stretch rewards than the other other levels do as well uh 40 50 60 70 80 yeah it's the digital that's putting it over so each of those digitals is generally worth i, I can't remember how tim does the pricing on that i think it's 40 percent off or 30 percent off or something like that uh so that 40 25 and 20 you need to add another whatever 20 14 and 8 i don't know <laughs> whatever that would be uh, be more than eight, uh, to get your overall, your overall thing done. 
Quick complaint I just made. <laughs> well, no, it's good. And getting all of these stretches, it's the hard. One of the things that Tim and I, when we put these Kickstarters together, uh, the math is tough, and you've got to do so many different arrangements of books. And then in the add-ons, they can sometimes build, and you get it just gets kind of crazy. So so much stuff that that you know you got to factor in. So it's it's just tough. And the thing that we forget all the time, of course, is the cost of PDFs. Oh, so that's where a flip book looks like. I'm digging that. Yeah, they're very cool. Uh, I got two kids in college. That five dollars is a bag of chips for me, and they won't eat. <laughs> yeah, I got two in college too, and. <laughs> it's kind of expensive. <laughs> of course, they're not in college right now because they close all the colleges in Arkansas. And, well, at least the ones they were going to, and everybody is here at the house. Yeah, the flip books are kind of cool. I mean, it's not really my cup of tea, but you got the Adventures backpack. Flip it over, and you get the Player's Handbook. Uh, and it's all all that content jammed in there. So I don't see why we couldn't do a spell book and a Player's Handbook uh, together. I think we can manage that. And then throw in an addiction to LG leather covers. <laughs> yeah, well, I just finished, finalized the um, the leather cover for the Lost City of Gaxmore for 5th edition. Uh, it's going to look good. I'm, I'm super, I'm super, super stoked about it. Always nervous about those things because there's so much, there's so much that goes into setting them where all of the, because so basically when we do that, that complicated leathers, and by those I mean, and this is what you'll see in the, in the Kickstarter we're doing now, that's, this leather here uh it's got the double embossing on it so the the red that you see is an embossing and the gold that you see is an embossing on a black leather that's beautiful um, man. yeah these things yeah thanks there's i absolutely love these books um but getting so you got to do three layers you've got to do the the embossing one layer embossing two layer and the text layers and it's just a lot of math involved <laughs> and as we did as as Grape Ape has already determined, math is not my strong suit. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very expensive to produce. And uh, now the simple leathers are not quite as expensive. The ones that just have a leather with the, the gold embossing. But those are a little bit. And I should point this out because I'm actually very proud of this part of it. It has the hubs on it like they used to do uh, long, long ago. It's also got a... Uh, oh, wow, what do you call it? Yeah, the hubs are very cool. Uh, the spine looks that way, and it's got the, the ribbon, the ribbon uh, marker in it. So just super excited about that type of book. Um, it, my my bibliophileness comes out with those letters, <laughs> but we'll see. I love Chuck's ghostly commentary. <laughs> the, the disembodied voice. <laughs> He's prettier than me today anyway. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we got a couple of people at our table that don't show up on camera. They just kind of sit on the sidelines. It's kind of disturbing. <laughs> Disembodied voices are the best. There you go. Yeah, DM. I you know, super, super, super love no, those things. Absolutely. Uh, Grape, I plan on making a uh, sojourn down to Arkansas soon with my U-Haul. Don't worry. I'm going to do Steve a favor. <laughs> yeah, you better, you better make it soon because everybody knows I'm notoriously cheap and... Uh, our warehouse is literally full, and I've got, what do we got coming in? Nothing. Gaxmore. We, yeah, we got Gaxmore, CKG, Player's Handbook, Adventure Spellbook, uh, okay. Player's Archive, if it makes it hard. It, we're going to get overwhelmed. James that, Ward? That, oh, good God. I didn't even think about the well, Starship Ward, and that's going to be, that's, that's like what, 690 pages mm -hmm. or some insanity. Yeah, we're going to have to make some kind of. And see, the, the very back three columns of that warehouse. So it's divided into three giant rows that you go down between them, right? And you can access just about everything. Everything's stacked and labeled, and it's all done properly. But the very back of the warehouse, three giant to the roof stacks, is TLG history. It's just overprints that didn't sell. It's just, you know, whatever. Uh, I just it survived my room. listen. I wanted to thank you for that case of Zagig stuff the last week you sent me. That was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a full case of Castle Zagig back there as well. Uh, I, I think fifteen of those boxes or something like that. There's all kinds of just stuff. You know, we can't sell any of the Gary <laughs> stuff, <Gary>. but yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's quite a bit of. We can't sell it obviously because we don't have the rights to sell that stuff anymore. But uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, jammed back in there. 
I tell you what's driving me absolutely batshit crazy is that classic monsters. So I found we, you know, we 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 ran, we put classic monsters in with monsters and treasure, right? So it's one book now. So then we had one box of the original first printing classic monsters. We sold those at five dollars just to move them on because I didn't want to throw them in the recycle bin. And then we found I had two boxes of the second printing of classic monsters, and we sold those for five bucks. And I said, this is it. This is the last you're ever going to see these books. If you want it, get these books, blah, blah, blah. Well, then Aldo, distributor, he sent me two boxes of them. Uh, so I said, again, this is the last you're ever going to see these. Blah. And I found another box of them. So <laughs> it's just like the damnable glass mugs. Yeah, exactly. I keep finding those glass mugs everywhere. I'm fixing to drop them, <laughs> and put them into those things. You can, I, yes, Commander, I can give it away. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I need, I need, what I need to do is take like two days and get in there and organize it and see actually what's in there. There's probably, uh, I don't know, there's probably a lot of stuff buried back in there that, that's, I don't know. There's just a lot. It's three giant columns of boxes upon boxes. I know like the other day I found, um, you know, so when we did the original Castles and Crusades game, it came out in a white box, a little bitty white box thing. We printed a thousand of them. Technically... Now, this gets really weird. So we technically printed 1,100. The first 100, and Derek, you may actually have one of these, the first 100 of them had uh, stickers on the top. Okay, so those we sold at Gen Con, I believe. And then the next 1,000 that came out were actually had the wrap around the box itself. And then we signed the first 300 as the Spartan 300. And I found a box of the first the, t the first 10 I kept for the trolls. I sent number one to Gary, I think. Or maybe number number 13 went to Mac because that's his favorite number. But I found this box of these old white, um, these old white, the old white CNC boxes. It's kind of cool. There's so much shit back in there. It's, <laughs> it's just, I'm just going to throw a Molotov cock back, cocktail back in there and burn it all out. <laughs> no, just, no, stop saying that. You're really causing me a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much stuff in there um that's yeah, cool though i mean it's it's cool you know i've got a sense of history too but um exploring the warehouse yeah. <laughs> there you go. into the depths yeah, of the I, warehouse <laughs> the hardest thing back there so peter as many of you know peter bradley moved to uh, england uh six years ago or something like that well he had a huge number of oil paintings i don't know 20 or 30 of them, beautiful oil paintings they weren't really fantasy oriented. They were his earlier stuff that he was doing, whatever. Uh, well, he couldn't take them to England, so he, on his way out, he stopped by here in Little Rock and dropped them all off with me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I've got, this, I've got this giant pile of, of Peter Bradley oils. Uh, they're beautiful paintings, I mean, but they're just stuck back there with all that other stuff. <clears throat> stuck in a corner. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> it's a nice box of Castle's Egg you got there. <laughs> like no adventure before. Enter the warehouse of the Troll Lord. Yeah, there you go. It's funny, too, how much stuff just accumulates over years. I mean, it's just, you don't know what to do with it, so you stick it somewhere, and well, there it sticks. Rhino will come down and clean it out for us. Excellent! <laughs> then I don't solved. have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, we should do like a Kickstarter and do like a gaming getaway. There you, there you go. <laughs> well, I guess we just probably need to really work on getting Trollcon going, you know? Yeah, that's what we need to do. I would love to do a new Trollcon. Uh, you know, my nephew, who many of you, if you've been to GaryCon, you definitely have met Dakota. Uh, he works for the Sherwood, um, Sherwood, Arkansas Parks and Rec Department now, and he's not the manager, but the assistant manager, I don't know what the hell he does, but uh, of one of their rec centers. Problem is, it's way, it's way out now. <laughs> There's not a hotel near it, so not sure if that's going to work on that end, but who knows. Palladium Books does that. They invite about 100 gamers or so to their warehouse for a gaming weekend. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'd have to get it a lot more organized than uh, the front part is organized. The back part, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> and you can see where I've switched boxes because it'll say... It'll have like player's handbook, second printing, and then that's scratched out. <laughs> it'll have something written underneath it, and that's scratched out. And then at some point, you don't even know what's in the damn thing. So it's just God knows what it is. It's good stuff, though. Let me know when you do it. I'll step into help desk for you. <laughs> it cost you a case of zagging. Yeah, aren't those things going for like a grand on eBay? 
Uh, they're going I for think a lot, man, for sure. It's crazy, and the GFW series is just. Let's see if I can get yeah, that. Yeah, I was mess looking open. at it, and a couple of mine are destroyed, or I, I can't even hardly one of them I can't even peel open the uh, <sighs> when it is now. But anyway. Yeah, it's uh, those are some great books, and I use the living crap out of those things. Uh, let's see. No, it's just, well, here is one for $8,000, but they're going for about 400 to 500 I see. Gary would die. I guess the one. Now, you know what? Can you imagine? That's, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we got a lot of stuff in the warehouse. Uh, just to sit there. And the hundreds, definitely. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of interesting. I'd love to see those books get back out. Who knows what the future holds, but, uh, yeah. Those things are, especially in today's environment where RPGs have exploded across, you know, all all stratums everywhere, age groups all over the place. Uh, and those books, especially the first five, now all of them are good, but the, up to Insidiate are fantastic. Uh, talk about GM's tricks of the trade, you know, that the mess I do on Thursdays, those GFWs are just filled from cover to cover mm -hmm. with just... Ways of looking at things, different ways to approach things, how to handle things, how to develop things. And the GFW series really was, uh, it, it was an accidental gold mine for us. We were, we really, when I, when he pitched the idea to me, that was the first thing he wanted published. I wasn't so hip on it because he, because the canning crew was the first of the books. Uh, and it didn't just, it just didn't seem to fit. But, um, yeah, but uh, it's funny, Homoot, because once it, I mean it fit, but once the canning crew, once the world builder landed on my desk, then I was like, okay, now this I'm jazzed about. Huge fan of um, what is that Palladium book called? Uh, it's an arms and armor yeah, I book. I can't think of, that's well, I think that's what it's called. Close enough, but yeah, arms and arm. Yes, weapons or something. I don't know, but it's it's one of the it, the most used books at my table of all time. I love that thing. It didn't give you gigantic, you know, descriptions of crap. It just, this is what this is, go. Yeah. Uh, which is really all I need and, and all most of us need. And that's what the world builder did. The living fantasy went a little bit different. It, it went kind of, it delved into a world where magic would be real, which is really cool. Just reading it is really, really cool. It's very, and that's mostly, that's like all Gygax in that one. And then, of course, the book of names, I use that continually. Uh, it, it, I've got one right here. When I'm writing and one out there in the game room, so I'm always pulling that out. And then in City, how to build a, a, a an adventure. Uh, it's a super good book. And then after that, it's the Nation Builder and the Palladium Book of Weapons and Armor. There you go. Yeah, I love that book. And it had castles in it. It was just a really good book. Um, of course, I never bought it. Davis bought it, and he took his copy back, that bastard. But, um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff in the GFW stuff. A uh, long time gone. So if you can get a hold of it used, do so. I strongly recommend it. Um, always a good thing. I was using Jim Ward's book on storytelling to help with sermon prep of years. Oh, very cool. That is very cool, Geek Preacher. We're talking to Jim about doing a mythological storytellers now, too. Um, but he is, he's at the moment, uh, how's it going, Clever? Uh, at the moment, Jim is, I don't know what he's working on, but we've got him on tap to do a, a tribute to the Hill Giants dead in G1 for the Kickstarter that we're running now. So I'm hoping we get to that stretch reward. Uh, I want some. I, I had the absolute pure pleasure of gaming with Jim a couple of weeks ago at Autumn Revel, the Gary Con Light they did a few weeks back. And uh, <laughs> it was so different than the way I normally play with descriptions and role playing and all of this other stuff it was just pure unadulterated fun that's i mean it was just sitting in on jim's game it was pure fun from the moment he started running that game until the end it's one of the most enjoyable games i've ever been in so i told him i want him to capture that for his his hill giant adventure assuming we get that level in the kickstart Davis's weapons books was almost like the Palladium book of weapons and armor. It's almost better than the Palladium's version. The thing that we want to add to that, Omoot, uh, and thank you for that. I'll let Davis know, but we want to, I want more armor in there, and then I want more stuff. Uh, what I'd like to see is everything explained. You know, there's a couple of uh, diagrams that we do in there that like has a sword, and it has everything, arrows pointing to what part of the sword is what. Uh, and we do that a little bit with armor, but I want it all... I want everything explained um, so that when we, so that when the end user picks that up and opens it, it's right there and they don't have to have, they don't have to look up anything. Um, it's just one of those things. 
<clears throat> oh yeah, Peter Bradley's weapons. Uh, Peter Peter Bradley's weapons are unmatched in the industry by anyone. I honestly believe that um, Peter Bradley's stuff is when he draws weapons. Now, his people are great. Everything's great. I love Peter's art. I love it through and through. If I didn't, it wouldn't be adorning a hundred different books. But but when he gets into doing the weapons uh, and shields and, and stuff like that, his weapons are just, I don't know, there's something about it that looks so, I don't know, it's immaculate. His pole arms, uh, all of it. He actually just finished, uh, we'll start printing it tomorrow, he just finished last week, the weapons of Gaxmore. Uh, and all of these, this 20 odd, 25 odd weapons that uh, Chris Clark and Turbo created for the Lost City of Gaxmore Kickstarter. Uh, and Peter just drew them all up. And they're just, they're just badass. I don't know what it is in Peter's <laughs> genetics that has him. Hey, I think, Chuck, I've got no video on the stream. I don't know if it's just me or. Uh, you look fine on my end. All right. Well, there you go. Saying there was a net. I just need to reboot, probably. Uh, listen, I Davis just sent me a message. Oh yeah. He wants to know if we can hop him in. Yeah, can I don't we care. try that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Steve likes to boost Doctor. <laughs> yes, more books, more books, more books. Just watch a Netflix series called the Barbarians. Very well done. Like yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but the ads look great, really. Steve, I love the sword that is in the front piece on the credits page. I love that sword, and that's a perfect Peter Bradley weapon. It's just they're just immaculate, and there's just we got. If you haven't seen Arms and Armor, clever, check it out. It's, there's dozens of those weapons in there. I'm cheating on my diet, Dr. Pepper, with, with some cokes here. Man, get preacher, that's not right. I immediately ordered a Codex Germania. That's a great book. I see. Is this the one about Arminius and the new series? Yeah, that's what I got to track that thing. So Davis is going to be joining us here in a minute. I think we're trying to work him in. Um, eight days, yep, 42. There's Davis's head bobbing up and down. Yeah, he's not on the stream just yet, though. I got to pull him in here. Okay, so Ultra Magnus, good. It's a good thing you're saying that because Peter Bradley and I have been secretly working on a Castles book uh, for about three months now, uh, pulling pictures, diagrams, and he's drawing up castles. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to write a very brief description of the castle and then uh, castle terminology uh, and then probably do flesh it out a little bit. Uh, we, we may, may do, even do uh, holler at Elisa to do some cross. cross. What do they call that? They call that. that. They call it. They call it. Davis, call it Davis, are you in? Is he in the stream? Yeah, stream yet? He yeah, he's over. He's over top of you for right now. <laughs> he's taking over. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. Am I in the stream? We don't. We don't. I don't. I don't. Whatever. 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 Yes, you are. Yes, you are in the stream. The stream. But your your mic. You need to get closer. to get closer to your mic. What happened to your mic? What happened to your mic? We need to hang it. We need to hang it on the ceiling, dude. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, barely. Uh, get it. Barely. Get it. Put it in your mouth. Don't put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. Put it. Oh wait, no. Oh wait, no. Maybe. As a disclosure, I have no, not responsible for any of this chat. Just want you to know. Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me see if there's a problem. Like, like. Okay. Now, now I can hear you. Oh really? Really? Yes. You just got to have that close to you. Dude, 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 what is that, that movement? movement? I, think I think it was the Bauhaus, Bauhaus movement, movement in the 1920s Germany. When, when they first began putting electrical cords in offices, and the whole movement was, was to integrate the, the cords with, with the office decor. decor. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it's Bauhaus. So they, they would hang things from the ceiling, like lights and whatnot, and be right in front of you. So that's what we're going to do with your microphone. We go all Bauhaus on your ass. Hang it right in front of you. In, in a way, way that's, that's sort of like, like I, I think, think it's, it's neat, neat to, to look at that, that type of design. design. <laughs> <laughs> to live in that type of design is a freaking nightmare. But, but it, it did give rise, rise to this whole cool thing. It's the cyberpunk. What sort of cyberpunk? What is the what thing is the with thing everything's, with everything's brown? brown. The Victorian, the Victorian, like, like, clockwork type stuff. What's that stuff. called? What's that, called? Uh, that is, uh, that is cyber. But hey, hold on, hey, hold on. You got some echo. Chuck, do we know where that echo is coming from? Probably me. And you might have to turn off your speaker. No, it's on my side. Do I, you have? I keep him quiet. Got it. Okay. So is the echo done? All right. Go ahead, Davis. You were saying steampunk is what is what Blood Wild's telling us. No. What's it? Yeah. No. What's that other thing? No. It's the other thing where the Victorian of uh, all those mechanical things. What is that called? That's Freaking steampunk. Jason. Steampunk. Yeah. Not yeah. the other. <laughs> 
yeah, no. Yeah, steampunk. It gave rise to this whole steampunk movement type thing, though, which is pretty cool. I, you know, I think, but to live in it, no. <laughs> it would drive me absolutely insane. I, I remember looking at pictures of that stuff, and there was just, no, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't care for it or anything. Yeah. And what was the other one we were talking about? Post punk? I don't know. What was it steampunk? Cyberpunk. Oh, cyberpunk. Oh, cyberpunk. Yeah, cyberpunk is what? That's, um, that's like science fiction crap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to develop this thing called post-punk, where yeah. there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. It's zero. <laughs> all the spaces are white and empty. Everyone stands up all the time. <laughs> and, the, and then you just float. You just float through existence. Yeah, just, float, yeah, just float through existence, watching old movies or something like that on Netflix. <laughs> anyway, so what were you talking about? Uh, I don't know what we were <laughs> I have no idea. What I'm fantasizing talking. about my dream life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can't quite make it out completely, but Davis and I worked very hard to get him an office space that has nothing in it. So, <laughs> so it's, it, his wall is clear. Uh, he's, now he's, he's half painted it, as you can see. He's gotten down to the other end there. He's got one chair behind him, and that's and that's it. So it's a very calm environment, which is good. There'll be no pictures on any walls. I'm thinking about removing all of the trim. <laughs> <laughs> just, get rid of, just get rid of the walls. No, then there's too much stuff outside. Get pure white slate for the floor, and that's it. Pure white walls and pure white slate. I just need to be in a padded cell somewhere. There's this. Uh, there's a. Uh, there's something to be said for less is more. There's there's definitely <laughs> something to be said for. I would like to say there is a lot to be said for less is more, but that would sort of defeat the purpose of. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. So I got these plants that are in my office a few years ago, right? And uh, they've, I've, they've, they've done well. They keep growing, but they keep growing. And these and things are all over the place. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. Well, that's good, though, because plants are actually, you know, I guess they're good for you. They're dirty, though. They make a mess. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm sure they're good for me, but it's just this, it's this ball of chaos behind me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to have a lot of plants. In college, I had a lot of plants in the room, but I, I eventually just got over that. With all the dirt on the floor and just whatever happened and knocking them over and whatever. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we got some questions rolling in uh, okay. as we talk about our yeah, weird I plants. Can't, I can't see anything. I don't know how to see anything. So you're just. Right, so I just wait. So, so Geek Preacher asks With all that in mind, I've had quite a few people ask me about a fictional medieval Christian setting for tabletop, tabletop RPGs. Do you think there would be enough of interest considering some of the older products along those lines? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so. You could take medieval Europe. Uh, I'm actually reading a history of the 10th century uh, Germany right now. And there's so when I'm reading it, there's so much fascinating stuff in it from monasteries to the way the bishops interacted, the emperors, the kings. The uh, I don't know. It's really, really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think there probably is. Yeah, I think there's probably. I, now, I would imagine, actually, there's a lot more interest than one would think. However... <laughs> I will put the brakes on it a little bit. I am reticent to do any real world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, for the variety of reasons that you can guess, you know. Right. Uh, especially so, in today's climate. Um, yeah, especially in today's climate. But, you know, it's, e it's easy. You know, I mean, I mean, how would you deal with, never mind, don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it would be difficult to manage without offending. I think it seems like a I think that what you would what you would almost have to do is just make the setting and make it kind of magic neutral. You know what I mean? So that whatever yeah, game what you bring yeah. to it, something like that. But you're right; it would it would be tough. Uh, so so clever asks. You've probably answered this before plenty of times, but humor me, will you? Which C and C adventure is your favorite? Um, I don't know. That's uh, probably for me. It's going to fall down on Assault on Blacktooth Ridge or Mike Stewart's Shadows of the Halfling Hall. Shadows of the Halfling Hall. We've all talked about A One a hundred times, but Shadows of the Halfling Hall is it's well written. It's well constructed. It's extremely contained. It's very very old school. So it's got that flavor to it that uh, G One, G Two, and all of those things. And Mike's really good at that. Uh, it's very deadly. It's very dangerous. Um, it's just a fun, fun. Yeah, adventure. Shadows of the Heaven Calls is a really, really, really good. It really one. is. Uh, it really is. And it doesn't. I don't think it. There's. I don't know how we can keep how we push it out there, but uh, 
Yeah, that would be ranked up there with one of my favorite ones. Of course, I like A1, but I like, you know, I actually like A0 better than A1. Oh, really? Yeah, I like the uh, Malfortin setting a lot better than A1. For some reason, I don't know why. I just Well, it's, it's pretty linear and simple. And A1 is, it's like of Skulls and Scrap Faggot Green. You remember that adventure? From yes, I actually that. found that somewhere. Did right you really? Was, <laughs> yeah, with some, uh, oh, I also found some old, uh, found a whole lot of D&D stuff, but I found some old, when I was in the army, you know, when you got equipment, they gave you those little cards. You signed yep. out for your own 16. I found like five of mine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know why I kept it. Anyway, yeah, but I ha I, I think I found a, cap a copy of uh, Skulls of Scrap Tiger Green over here. Yeah, Just that, a copy. That, that adventure is fantastic, but it's very complicated. It's not easy to run. Uh, yeah, and, no. that, and A1 kind of has that. I mean, you don't have to go that route, but there's a lot of NPCs in A1. There's the town, the river, the dungeons the encounter yeah. areas it's there's a lot going on in anyone oh yeah uh, i forgot we went back and added to that we took all my own note old notes and put back in it yes yeah you probably haven't looked at it since it was 24 pages it's a 48 page book now yeah uh, no yeah no, i forgot you did that yeah it's it's a thick one because we cut a lot out remember in those days we had a contract with walsworth that we couldn't go over 24 pages yeah. so i had to cut everybody's content out and we just stuck it in files forever and a day and I think of the stuff I wrote, probably Line in the Ropes is my yeah, favorite. Yeah, Line in the Ropes is my favorite of the ones you've written. Yeah, it's got, okay. yeah, it's got three different kind of adventures going on simultaneously. And I like that. I like I like keeping characters in the dark, players in the dark as to what actually is going on. And that one's kind of built that way. So, But uh, Halfling Hall, if you haven't picked it up, I strongly recommend that, that book. Last Laugh, yes, absolutely. It is an outstanding book. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, Davis, you can't see any of this. Uh, Bloodwild says, yeah, Halfling Hall seemed to get a lot of attention during virtual Greyhawk Con. Yeah, it's just one of the, And you ran it, didn't you, Chuck? Yeah, I did. I uh, killed everybody, but yeah, we, we ran it. It was good. <laughs> um, I, of course, that's, you know, it's like any of these adventures. When you do something on a con or, or whatever, you've got to cut a lot of stuff out. I, I'm, I had to, you know, to fix a little bit, jury rig it, you know. But, uh, yeah, they uh, they all made it into the tomb. And I'm trying to remember now, but it seems like they made it about halfway through to those to those doors started opening up and all those zombies came. I think it was zombies. Whatever it was. Something. And just overran them. It was pretty bad. In fact, the group that was in there, and some of them's probably in the chat right now. Uh, yeah, I have my magic hat on. He, uh, They actually let some of them loose into the town by mistake. And so, you know, I told them at the end of it, it was bad <laughs> into the town. They were trying to decide whether to go <laughs> back into the town and chase them down or continue into the, you know, further in to the barrow or whatever. And it was it was pretty interesting, the, the heated discussion about which way to go. And they finally decided to let the townsfolk just, you know, die or whatever. Deal, deal, with, it. <laughs> deal, deal yeah. with it themselves. Yeah, I, I ran that for the group that I'm running now. Davis was actually in it. He probably didn't remember it, but... When they were like fifth level or fourth level, I, I sent them into Shadows of the Halfling Hall, and it was so tough. It's the only adventure that that group ever quit. Yeah. They, <laughs> they quit about the trap room. They're like, ah, we're out. And just, they left. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge us, will you? Exactly. Why is a flambeur a one handed weapon in the seventh printing of the PHB? I have no idea, Omu. <laughs> that's a good note, too. We need to make sure that oh, the word great is put into What is that weapon in there that everybody thinks is one-handed and it's not? Um, the good no, tog. Spear, I think. One of them is missing the word great or whatever. It doesn't have the, the two-handed little notation star. And so everybody thinks it's a one-handed. Oh, right. Everybody always wants to pick that weapon for their character because it's one-handed, supposedly. You know, and it does like 2D12 damage or something stupid like that. I can't remember, but... Wait, actually, yeah, really? What is I don't remember. So uh, Flambeers, I'm looking that up. My we weapon. probably just scimitar. left the That's asterisk it? or whatever it was. Great scimitar. Oh, like great scimitar. Oh, the great Man, scimitar. I hate, I hate that. Wait, are you talking about a spear? No, it's scimitar. I got mixed up. Oh, no, it's, it's, oh, okay. it's oh yeah, no, that great scimitar is yeah. supposed to be two-handed. Flambeers too, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure how that yes. got left off, uh, Omo. I, rem I remember we had to go through and edit some of those things. Uh, Tyler, I believe, had found a couple of things off in that section. And really, while I was editing it, I should have cleaned out the uh, 
the great scimitar. I should have thrown it out. I hate that. I hate that thing. So I no, no, I no, 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 you shouldn't have. <laughs> no, listen, listen. So Gary Gygax, uh, he he got into my head. So years and years and years ago, we were sitting on his porch, and of course, D twenty third edition is out, and I don't know what weapon was he was talking about, but or who was who, but someone talked about the great the great axe or the great sword or whatever, <laughs> and Gary gave this nice. 10 minute diatribe about how there's that's the stupidest name for a, a, a sword there's no great sword what is it fantastic or something <laughs> it was it was really there's no way i can do gary justice but it was really funny and it got into my head so that <laughs> so the, the whole great no. thing needs to just be out yeah actually the uh I was the one I think who put the great scimitar in there, and it was based on weapons used. Now, here's a funny thing that a lot of people don't I don't say a lot. Some people aren't aware of. A lot of those weapons that you see on display and that the guards carried and stuff like that, they were ceremonial. They had right. no utility in combat because they were so heavy, so unwieldy, or whatever, you know? Uh, I mean, if you look at, like, the actual military picks and stuff like that, they're like a claw tooth hammer in size because you can wield that and you can move it quick. And they're not these huge, massive freaking things. And the Great Scimitar was based on, I think it was a painting of Persian palace guards or a rendition of Persian, Persian palace guards or an actual artifact from uh, an Iranian museum. And they had these scimitars that were so huge. I mean, they were the size of a human body. And I thought, wow, that would be Coming awesome. Out of the building, the building okay. dragging the sword behind them, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, let me, so let me ruin it for you, Davis. So, no. you know, I run, I run a game for Pete and my son and his buddies. And um, he, he chose the Great Scimitar because it does the most damage. He didn't care about looks. He didn't care about any role playing. It does damage. So he did it. But every time he rolls initiative and he says, I swing my great scimitar, I immediately picture a Three Stooges episode because there, <laughs> there was a couple of Three Stooges episodes where they're in the East or whatever, I don't know, and there's that dude with the turban and the giant scimitar chasing him around the tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's another, there's, uh, who was the other one who did those Middle Eastern things or all over the world? Bob Hope, not Bob Hope. Was it Bob Hope? Uh, yeah, Bob Hope and uh, Bing Crosby are. Yeah, yeah, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby did their like things, and they had one set in uh, Algeria, Morocco. Something Morocco, the same probably. Type of thing like it. Yeah, same <laughs> sort of thing. In it. Yeah, no, and what I meant with those things, that's why I want to go back to that weapons book and rebuild that whole weapons book. You know, because certain weapons are designed for certain strengths, and we know for a fact historically that was the case. I mean, not everyone could be in those two-handed sword armies that the Germans and the Swiss had. Not every you had to be big and strong to carry those things and use those things effectively. Road uh, to so Morocco. The, That's Road to Morocco. Yeah, Everybody. Yeah, Road to Morocco. <laughs> I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. That and uh, that's a good movie. Uh, no, but you're right. I mean, and but we what we need to do and let everybody know, everybody out there, if you find and Chuck, you'd have to put the link up. We've got a place somewhere online where if you find something the player's handbook needs to be fixed, you can post it and we can get it into the eighth printing. Uh, I mean, if I'm not I'm not gonna be able to catch all the stuff that needs fixed. So if you find something, definitely, definitely let us know about it. Now, I like this flambearage. It needs the asterisks, and clearly the great scimitar needs the asterisks, too. Uh, that's why Pete's using it, because he can carry his sword and shield simultaneously. <laughs> so, I'm trying to see what happened in the adventure's backpack. It's wrong both in it, it, this, yeah, the flambearage and the scimitar is not marked correctly in the adventure's backpack, either. But, yeah, definitely now is the... Uh, now is the time to let us know because uh, I'm not sure when we're going to go to print, but it's going to be relatively soon. Uh, when as soon as the art's done, we'll do layout. We'll kind of fix the layout how we want and uh, get that sucker off to print. So if you if you have found something like that, let us know. We'll get that we'll get that crap fixed. ASAP. In fact, I got the file here. I, when I see something like that, I go in and fix it uh, so I don't have to so I don't forget about it. So we fixed the hook sword, it sounds like. So that's good. Um, oh, wait, wait. What did we do the hook hook sword? Wait. I've got all that crap right here. 
Uh, they've been talking about it. Uh, let's see what happened to the hook sword. There's also a footnote six for a weapon that was removed. So a footnote with no weapon directed towards it. And that was the hook. So that was footnote six, but it was actually for the hook sword. And it should have been fixed. It wasn't, though. I thought there was a six in here somewhere. Well, there's a six on the... I need to find my glasses. Oh, you know what I've done? I did. A, I fixed it in the eighth printing. It's not in the seventh printing, but in the eighth minute printing is where these things have been fixed. Uh, I don't know why I keep looking at. I can't check right now because it's all got to update. Because you know, really, it's sort of like all pointless anyway. I mean, you basically have like D four, D six, D eight, D ten, D twelve damage. That's it, and all your weapons should fall into that range. Yeah, we I still mean, get a few. If you want to make a simple game. I like to make it complex as possible, though. <laughs> <laughs> you have had that uh, effect on the game in the past. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm, I'm looking that up, Commander Pete. Uh, okay, good deal. Yeah, so go there if you have anything that needs fixed. Uh, and we'll go in there. Let's see, it's going to be on page 63. So I'm opening up the master file of the player's handbook right now. Uh, I can get Davis's head in. Let me get my glasses. Make everything D6. Boy, that sounds familiar. I think I knocked myself out of the stream, or did yeah, I? I think you did something, Tucky. Oh. Something's going on yeah. here. <laughs> I closed something. So now I'm adding an asterisk to the Great Scimitar, and I'm adding an asterisk to the Flambert. So those two are big in the Master file. Uh, I don't know if anyone can hear me because I, I killed the whole... Yeah, we can, we can... Well, I don't know if they can hear you. I can hear you. But Davis has taken over the stream. which is a rending weapon. And then its use in over time changed, so it became like a basket-hilted sword, straight sword or something like that. But it's supposed to have that wavy blade, not necessarily two-handed, but two-handed. Anyway, but that's what it is. But I suggest, this is my suggestion with weapons, is that we go back, do you remember, maybe it was in a look, there's like a strength, requirement to wield certain weapons and shoot certain bows because to shoot the long bow the actual classic, classic long bow i mean i've tried to pull one before i can't heck i can barely pull a 40 pound bow as it is uh and what are those like 120 pounds or something like that i think we've got strength requirements dexterity requirements <laughs> training retinues <laughs> The master before you can correct us in your level. <laughs> and I'll bog the game down in minutia and details that are completely unimportant. But anyway, the weapons book I think would be fun to expand on uh, that. Yeah, we definitely need to expand that in the future. But uh, now, that I'm, now that I'm back on the stream, uh, yes, uh, Wolfgang. Alstrag is part of next year's big push into the Planescape. They've actually started, already started working on the Planescape books. Not a lot yet, but uh, I'm just writing things down. I was working on Gahana last week. Um, but we're going to do a whole big push into the Plains, Alstrag, Amazing Adventures, Terraformed Venus, all kinds of stuff that we're doing. Uh, and that'll probably tie into a second printing or a third printing of the Codex of Air and bringing in Zaya uh, up to speed with a nice, good hardback book. Uh, thanks a lot, DM. Uh, I will uh, be in touch very, very soon with the next file for you, but, uh, oh, good God, it's already 5 o'clock. Uh, and I keep closing windows. I don't know what I'm doing over here. Just just don't put oh, nothing. I was just streaming. Much. Yeah, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> uh, yes, 42, it did a couple of weeks ago. Chuck, have we posted that, the YouTube video of yeah, my get, game that I, I ran? Real quick. Yeah. yeah, I actually want to throw that out there a little bit. That was yeah, a, a lot of fun. I, I just got through editing and working on that the other day, and I think it's about ready, but I think it's already up on the channel. Here it is. Let me get it for you. We, we, are, we, we are overworking, Chuck. Oh, it's all good. I do it for... Keep It'll keep you young. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, election, it's election day. We should be working. 
24 <laughs> hours a day, every day. You should, be doing, that. Huh? You should be doing that every day. I know, I know, I know, like, your big complaint about, like, is it Labor Day we're supposed to take off because we celebrate labor? That's crazy. I know, we're supposed to labor on Labor Day. It's a Labor Day. You're labor supposed day. to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone post, and not to, not to get into any election stuff, but I saw someone post, how do you handle the um, election, election day jitters? And I, I didn't say anything, but my immediate response was, I work. You just keep working. Don't ever stop working. It doesn't it, really it matter. Doesn't matter when anything's going on. You're still going to have to work at the end of the day. Yep. It doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter what you know. If there's a hurricane. Keep working. If there's, <laughs> just keep working. Don't stop working. Yeah. It doesn't get to stop. It never gets to just stop. Just as a just as a disclaimer on that video, I did not edit the first 20 minutes of dragging everybody into freaking Skype. So there's a little bit of a wait <laughs> period there. So you got. Good God. You got time to get popcorn or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. I think the next one we're going to try to do, we're going to do it in Discord because I've come up with a workaround to not use Skype, I think. But we'll see. Well, I think you guys need to get all these fancy, fancy video intros you and David should do it and put it in front of our stuff. That'd be badass. Well, the one with The Rock. We could just do we could just do fancy intros instead of even having us. That's true. Just have shit yeah. <laughs> Hey, so I like Boffrin's got a great Boffrin says here, mine that coal until you hit stone, then quarry stone. I like his attitude. <laughs> that is freaking great. I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah, Gig Preacher, Gig Preacher says, hey man, watch that Protestant work ethic, okay? <laughs> I, I tend to, to lean towards the whole Calvinist thing, I think. <laughs> at least with the work ethic. I just know that if you're if you're working at least you even if and i've said this the other day in whatever comment i made even if you're doing something that's not like earning you money that doesn't matter uh, obviously you want to earn money you gotta earn a living but clean your sock drawer out do something to make your life a little better every day uh, and you'll find over time that your life's just a little better yeah if you just actually it's really funny though because if you just take if you start off because this worked for me years ago. I'm trying to reintroduce it, but I can never manage to get the five minutes that I need. If you just take five minutes, you start like day one, five minutes, just five minutes out of your day and focus 100% that five minutes on producing what you want to produce that day and then stop and then go back to regular day as you ever were before. And every day, you and get just better. add a you add a minute. I do that. Here I'm going to show you. I'm up 15 hours now, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm working so, backwards because I'm down to like 30 minutes of productive time a day. <laughs> See if I can get this microphone out of the way. I'm going to show you what I did like what last week. That? So if you look, this is my plant explosion. If you look, this is the refrigerator. <laughs> it has my Dr Pepper. Right? So my refrigerator is actually it looks like a it's like an right oasis. <laughs> it's at a slight angle, so if you if you leave the door, as you can notice, the door closes. It's very aggravating to put Dr. Peppers in. So what I did is I make myself a little wire that hooks here and here so that when I'm putting Dr. Pepper in, the door stays open. And that sounds crazy, but it made my life a little bit easier. Just a little easier. You know, at the bottom of those things, they have the leveling by, so you can just screw it, and it'll yeah, yeah, level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, okay. not, <laughs> not, not on that refrigerator. <laughs> so this would be my solution to that situation. I would take the refrigerator and throw it away. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, that, that refrigerator, I almost threw it away, but we bought a new one, and, and I said, I don't want to get rid of this one until I know the new one works. And I hooked the new one up, and it's in there. It's in the mail room. It's where everybody else's Dr. Pepper is. This is my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> There's uh, a vision of Dr. Pepper it does going not, on here. <laughs> it does not keep, the new one does not keep it as cold as this This 20-year-old machine that has been dropped, kicked, busted, uh, broken. <laughs> so I'm sticking with that one. But anyways, the point being, you can make your life a little bit easier with just a little bit of work. Yeah, you, of course add, you, like, you do that a minute a day, and at the end of one month, you're like 30 minutes. At the end of the year, you have six hours of productive time. Do you know that most people only get about two and a half hours of productive time out of their day? But if you can actually create your life to produce six hours of productive time, you're ahead of half the population. It's, it really is just organizing and making things a little bit easier. 
Yeah. He showed he showed part of the horde. Yeah, that's that's my horde, Buffer. That's my horde. <laughs> yes, I like cold, cold Dr. Pepper. There is no doubt. Oh, Possibly has an R21 in it. There you go. <laughs> well, I think that's about it for the day with Davis and I lecturing about stuff that we only barely have a, 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 a grasp of anyways. <laughs> Organizing yeah, our and own don't let, Yeah, don't let me fool you. It's not like I have even one minute out of my day organizer focused. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I know it can work potentially, like in this it like can work, right. world network. <laughs> that's the hope. But uh, that's it for today's Ask Me Anything. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. We sure appreciate it. Give us a follow if you haven't. Uh, I will be back on Thursday at uh, 4 o'clock for GM Strict to the Trade. And we got Haunted Holler Painting tomorrow at 7. And then back again next week for Ask Me Anything. Uh, thank you all for showing up. We surely do appreciate it. Chuck, you want to take all us right. out? Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay.